A layer mask can be applied and then edited or made from a selection. This is the same way all layer masks would be created. In the example on the screen, we blurred the image using underpainting filter with its default settings. After we were done, we realized it was too blurry, so decided to bring some of the areas back into focus. Since the image has unique lighting, we decided it would be interesting to see what would happen if we brought the lighter parts of the image back into focus. So we used the color range command to select just the light shades in the image. So that's the whites and the beiges. And then filled those areas on the layer mask with black to allow the original images to show through. Because on a layer mask, anything that's painted white remains the same and anything painted black allows us to see through it and onto the layer below. In this case, I have a copy of the original image that shines through. Let's take a look at those steps a little more closely. First, we needed to make a selection of the light areas in the image. We did so by selecting the background copy layer and choosing the select menu and then color range. Inside the color range dialog box, we used the samples colors picker to select the lighter colors in the image and then increase the fuzziness until we had a fair amount of the image selected. When we were happy with the result, we selected OK. The selection loaded in our document. We then switched to the empty layer mask that had been created on our smart filter and then used the edit menu to fill the entire selection with black. You can see the result on the far right image. In this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the original filter applied to the entire image and the result showing the result allowing in-focus areas to reappear in the lighter areas of the image. It creates a soft stylized effect. So let's jump over to Photoshop and let's see this happen in real time. This is the same image we've been using previously in our slideshow or our lecture here, but I do not want to have the effects applied to it that we applied previously. Our destructive editing layer will not help us. I can't undo it, so I'll just trash that layer. But our filter gallery, um, our smart filter with the filter gallery filter applied to it will. And so we can double click on the filter gallery and we can change it. In this case, I want to have underpainting. And if we take a look at our dialog box, we have plastic wrap and underpainting selected. And so instead of trying to redo this or reinvent the wheel, I'm simply going to select the plastic wrap uh, filter layer and hit the trash can and it will disappear and now I'm back to underpainting and I'm just going to leave it at the default settings because the purpose of this video isn't to show you how to adjust the filter but how to adjust a layer mask on that filter. And so now that we have the filter applied, I'm going to undock my layers panel, we have the filter applied to a smart object, it becomes a smart filter. And if we take a look at the layers panel, the filter has a layer mask by default but it's all white, meaning that the effect is applying to the entire layer. If I was to paint black on this layer in some places, I would be able to show through to the unfiltered layer because it would create a hole and show down to the layer beneath. Whitney and I decided that it would be fun to try to pull out certain colors in the image. And so instead of just painting or making a selection, I'm going to use the color range selection to select all of the beige areas, um, kind of because there's, there's like a... Maybe there's a photo term for this, Whitney, but there's a cool glow of the angle of the sun. Like you can tell it's a certain time of day. And so we thought maybe we'd pull out the warm um, light tones from the sun that are hitting the buildings and bring those back into focus. To do that, we must select the actual layer. If you have the smart filter layer selected, nothing will happen. So you have to make sure you have the background copy layer selected. You can go to the select menu and choose color range. Inside this dialog box, I'm going to change the selection preview to none because um, that red kind of bugs me. Uh, with the sampled colors uh, option selected from your drop down menu, you can click in the image, like the actual image, in the area that you would like to select color. And as you select different areas, uh, it will switch to colors that are similar to that. You can hold shift to add additional colors. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click one area and then increase or decrease, decrease the fuzziness slider until a fair amount of the image is selected and then select OK. When you select OK, that part of the image will become selected and this might be familiar to you. We did this when we changed the color of the tulips earlier in the semester. Um, now that I have that, I can select my layer mask and because the changes are limited to inside the selected areas, if I choose edit and then fill, I can fill my entire selection with black on the layer mask and anything black on a layer mask will disappear. And so it'll allow, if we deselect, 
in focus areas that were highlighted beige and yellow and white to come back into focus in the image. And you could repeat that again if you wanted to, if you wanted to bring all the greens back. You could go to the select menu, make sure you're on the background layer. You can go to the select menu, choose color range, and this time I can click the green area. Maybe I'll lower the fuzziness slider and select OK. Now I have a different selection, but if I do the same thing, if I select the, the layer mask and choose edit and fill, I can fill it with black and then those areas become more in, in focus. And so I can create a unique stylized effect that's much more um, aesthetically pleasing than having, um, let's disable that layer mask, than having a blurry image that you can't really tell what it was. And so in combination with the, the filter, which creates the effect, and then the layer mask, we can create a combo effect.